dear colleagues and friends of the Macau Ritchie Institute and the University of St. Joseph, most welcome to our forum on the challenge of the second Deignan Award for Responsible Entrepreneurship. It is a special pleasure and honor to welcome Professor Dr. Jenny Wan among us. Most welcome, Jenny. Jenny is the president of the Macau Institute for Corporate Social Responsibility in the Greater China Zone. We pursue our challenge with the second Daignan Award, and we still build up our profile. So what is specific to the Daignan Award? So I'm always glad to share this special privilege to be able to work with Father Daignan. Uh, first, 20 years ago, we had a conference in Hong Kong on regaining trust and business ethics. In 2011, also with Wofu Enterprises, we had the chance to have another uh, major conference on business ethics. And it was also this sincere kind of analysis of Father Daignan uh, with his passion for pedagogy, who shared with me, Stefan, in these business ethics conferences, there is much lip service being paid to business ethics. So he was certainly a, a man who was very encouraging. On the other hand, he had also a clear perception about the hypocrisy of some uh, firms kind of declaring their uh, allegiance to business ethics without being really serious. And when we were about to launch this first round of the Daignan Award for Responsible Entrepreneurship, many people advised us not to do that because it was during COVID and they said it's too gloomy. Uh, but then actually we were very surprised about, I would always say, of course, a modest success of the first Daignan Award when we realized how much small and medium-sized companies did help people who were in distress to had to cope to survive in a very serious crisis. So therefore, the specific profile of the Daignan Award as a link between entrepreneurship and these values of fairness, business ethics, care for the disadvantage, this is something very specific. And I think we need at least three rounds to really properly communicate uh, what the Daignan Award really is about. And I feel very privileged that from the very beginning, we have been uh, enjoying the support from the Macau Institute for Corporate Social Responsibility in Greater China. Your dedicated group from very different groups, different universities helped us a lot to hammer out the criteria. And therefore, I feel there's a great chance uh, that we have Professor Chenyi Guan among us to share uh, what makes this prize specific. And of course, I'm so glad to share that we have now altogether 42 applications from Macau and Hong Kong. And so we want also to communicate how we now evaluate and that it was really a rigorous process to define these criteria. As there is also, I remember the first uh, award ceremony I assisted here 10 years ago is always a bit of temptation to use it so for glamorous purposes. I think we really want always to have certain, also research a certain uh, rigorous demand uh, to clearly define what we are all about when we promote 
these values uh, which have been so close to the heart of our dear father, Freddie Deitman. So without further ado, I, the floor is to you, uh, Professor Cheney. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Father Stefan. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity here to share something I think is very valuable and meaningful and important to today's business world. Okay. Uh, not only uh, uh, about the details of the uh, Dagna Award, but also I would like to um, introduce more background knowledge and the principles of this kind of ethical business practice. And as mentioned uh, just now by Father Stephen, and this year's award, we uh, received a lot of applications from SMEs from Hong Kong and Macau. And mm -hmm. one thing I would like to uh, uh, remind uh, everyone is, uh, in the business sector, why the SME is so important? Because they represent the majority of the populations uh, in in these business sectors, and the accumulated social impact actually is very huge, and we do not only look at the GDP generated by them. Of course, uh, most of the GDP generated by those SOEs or those large sized enterprises, but for the social impact, we cannot only uh, measuring the contribution in terms of the monetary form. We also need to. Uh, focus something uh, which is uh, non-financially, uh, uh, which cannot be uh, financially uh, uh, explained, right? Uh, what, what we call the CSR performance. And so because the competition in today's uh, business environment is very sharp, uh, especially for SMEs, it's not very easy for them to survive for long term. That, and therefore, we're always seeking for some competitive advantage or shining point, uh, shining, uh, point of uh, specific SMEs to see how can they uh, uh, attract their customers and the different groups of the stakeholders. Uh, we usually call that at success factors. Um, as I mentioned just now, uh, in today's business world, uh, how to generate profit is not the only success factor of a, a commercial company. Actually, we also try to uh, look at how can they create wealth and happiness uh, for their stakeholders, for different types of the stakeholder groups, and how can they help to uh, deliver the or bring the positive influence uh, and on creating a better business environment. And, and also, uh, whether can they share for those experienced company, whether can they share their best practice and their experience with uh, uh, those uh, younger generations or educate those uh, younger talents. Okay? And overall, the priorities uh, we think uh, not only is focused on uh, profit making, uh, we need to take care of other aspects of the uh, CSR uh, dimensions. And just now, Father Stephen also introduced the origin of this award. And here, um, uh, as as shown uh, on the PPT slide, uh, you find out the very famous saying uh, of Father uh, Dignan. And actually, last year uh, was the 70th anniversary of Father Alfred Dagnan's arrival in Hong Kong. And this uh, award okay, aims to uh, memorize his uh, great contribution uh, towards the uh, creating a very ethical business environment and to educate those enterprises in the past. And uh, the award not only recognized uh, Father uh, Dagnan's mission and the commitment uh, on the promotion mm -hmm. of the values and ethical business practice, they also uh, helped, the award also helped to encourage more and more small, medium sized enterprises to join these army, try to uh, deliver good to the society, okay? to create some kind of good atmosphere. Uh, in the business world. So, and the objective 
um, of the award, as I mentioned, focus uh, focusing on the SMEs uh, in Macau and Hong Kong. And it can be selected, the, the enterprises can be selected uh, um, according to their size, okay? Once uh, the size is below 100% of the business size, below 100 person, then uh, they are eligible to apply uh, uh, for, for this award. Okay? And uh, those SMEs need to show us uh, what they have done, kind of achievements. Uh, they have made the business operation and try to uh, uh, provide some kind of uh, information to the uh, judges. Okay? And then uh, the judges will evaluate their performance uh, according uh, to those uh, submitted documents. The panel of judges will shortlist three finalists of SMEs from each city and uh, decide on the winner. And this year's uh, award ceremony will be held on uh, March 15th uh, in 2025. So before I move to the detailed uh, award criteria, uh, I would like to uh, show a short video. Uh, uh, let's recap the second that award launching ceremony together. Let's go return back to the PPT slides. As you've seen from the video, um, um, the judges and the panel members get together as a lot of attendees get together to uh, discuss those uh, uh, important or uh, interesting uh, topics related to uh, the award. And also uh, they, uh, the judges and the panel members also uh, uh, express their uh, understanding of, of uh, the key aspects of those uh, related issues. And here I would like to introduce uh, some details of the criteria. Uh, and the criteria and the measurement actually uh, can uh, refer to five uh, core values, uh, namely respecting human uh, dignity and respecting fairness, uh, respecting environment and business ethics and disadvantaged and entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. As you see on your uh, right hand side, each for each core value. In these are some sub dimensions and weights. So the allocation of weights to the five core values and additional enhancement is suggested, okay, uh, 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 by panel members uh, based on um, some uh, generally accepted uh, guidelines principles. For example, ESG, uh, SDG. Uh, GRI. Okay, later on I will introduce all these terms to you. Uh, and the uh, and the main assessment concept actually is uh um, if you can submit more information, uh, the assessment score uh, will be higher. But nevertheless, uh, the quantity and the quality of the information um supplied must be considered in a balanced way. Okay, so not only. The quantity. Uh, we also look at the quality of the material ha uh, have been submitted, and uh, in addition, uh, as you seen from uh, 
the list here, the table here, uh, each company uh, suggested to uh, submit the statement of their mission missions. They also need to talk about what they have achieved towards the mission and uh, vision and try to compare uh, the results with the sub-dimension criteria. Okay? But uh, uh, we do not look at what uh, intends to be done, uh, what intends to be done, but we more care about what has been achieved Okay, these are the main uh, considerations okay, when the judges um, evaluate each applicant. As if you visit the website of the award, uh, you will find out a very large table. Uh, beside these subdimensions and weights, and they have additional role to show out for each subdimension what kind of or what types of uh, documents need to be submitted. Uh, um, for quantitative these documents and uh, information can be uh, uh, quantitative form or qualitative form. The quantitative ones uh, can be, for example, the scores, statistics, or, or reports, okay? And for the qualitative one, like uh, uh, provide some case descriptions and some interview uh, videos, or also uh, uh, can uh, invite the uh, panel member or ju judges to uh, do a site visit. Okay. All these uh, kind of can be uh, treated as a kind of evidence for, for the uh, evaluation, for the assessment. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I believe uh, many audience, uh, not only audience, but also those uh, SMEs will have uh, some questions related to the concept and definitions of uh, uh, sustainability because uh, in our uh, criteria we have mentioned a lot uh, number of times about sustainability environment and uh, uh, good uh, practice to the society right so if we want to uh, find the answers of these questions we need to go back to the original concept first uh, for sustainability actually this is an umbrella term Okay, I think it is an um, umbrella term. Uh, under this umbrella, we have social responsibility. Uh, we have ESG. Uh, we have other ethical issues. Okay, and all these can be uh, classified or grouped into the concept of sustainability. But uh, in principle, we can look at a uh, triple bottom line. For for triple bottom triple bottom principle, uh, we can refer to these. Uh, uh, picture. Um, basically, we have three large dimensions, and each dimension they have some, uh, every two dimensions they have some overlap area. But among these three, okay, the center uh, of these three balls actually is the achievement of truly sustainable development. Okay, and between uh, two of them, every two of them, they have some other types of the cross uh, areas. Okay, we can focus on okay? that. That is uh, basically uh, we uh, mainly focus on the environmental, uh, economic, and the social aspects. But with time goes by, uh, uh, when uh, with the development of the whole business world, okay, uh, we try to enlarge the scope of these three dimensions and and, uh, and mix them uh, with a different uh, kind of the uh, indicators. Okay. Later on, we will look at SDG and ESG guidelines. Uh, you will see uh, there are many other sub-dimensions already covered. And uh, Another question SME always uh, need to think about is because we know that for large companies, they have a lot of resources to uh, deliver those, uh, so, uh, those activities or uh, work, which is good for the society, for the common good of the society. But for SMEs, they do not have much uh, uh, time or uh, financial resources as well as human resource uh, to do some uh, ethical or CSR uh, uh, work, okay? So that's why for this kind of circumstance, uh, they have to find ways to identify the most of the most important stakeholder groups and try to allocate their resources okay, accordingly. Uh, so uh, before we look at the types of stakeholder groups, we need to think about what kind of uh, 
stakeholders, uh, we, which group of stakeholders are important to us. Mm -hmm. And you need to uh, dig out the answers from your business nature and think about uh, uh, which group of the parties okay, uh, you, have, you have the most uh, frequent uh, action during the daily operations, okay? And uh, your business activities will bring uh, what kind of impact uh, to them. Uh, and these are the uh, key issues uh, we need to uh, bear in, your mind, uh, in our mind, okay? And the traditional stakeholder groups like uh, mainly can classify into two parts, internal and external, okay? Uh, for internal stakeholder groups, uh, like the shareholders, which is our uh, principal stakeholder, because the company need to ensure uh, the, uh, the the business uh, can uh, is make uh, can make profit to uh, uh, to uh, move forward. Okay, and they need to uh, fulfill the responsibility towards their uh, shareholders. And uh, another group is the employee, as well as uh, uh, some uh, other. Uh, like a uh, middle level and top level management, okay. And but for external group, the traditional one is customers. Uh, but if we look at today's business world, uh, you may identify more and more stakeholder groups because uh, the interest of the company itself actually is linked uh, interlinked with uh, many outsiders. Okay, these outsiders can be not only consumers, can be uh, certification bodies can be NGOs, uh, can be trade associations, government bodies, um, and uh, some other special interest groups. Okay, and the following question popped out maybe. Okay, and uh, SMEs may also want to know now I can identify my stakeholder groups, but what should I do, and how to fulfill and practice in a good way. Okay, towards uh, the public and uh, how can I evaluate the my performance and whether uh, the work the, the objective have been achieved or the work have been delivered is effectively uh, is effective or efficient okay all these questions actually you can find out the answers from some uh, good guidelines and these guidelines also generally accepted uh, worldwide. So uh, here I would like to introduce, uh, mainly introduce two due to the uh, uh, time concern, okay? Uh, one is ESG and the other is uh, uh, SDG, initiated by the United Nations. And both uh, guidelines actually, they, uh, they have some common uh, contents and uh, some overlap scope. And uh, as you see from this picture, we uh, for SDG, we have 17, uh, goals uh, can be mapped with those three dimensions of ESG guidelines. Okay, so let's uh, look at ESG first. So ESG, um, many uh, many uh, enterprises are familiar with this term because uh, no matter uh, not only in Hong Kong but also uh, in other stock exchanges, uh, ESG is the mandatory disclosure requirement. Uh, uh, for the uh, for the listed company in Hong Kong, uh, the requirement uh, actually the guideline released in two thousand fifteen. But at that time, uh, the stock exchange only encouraged the public company to disclose the related information in their public report or on their website. Uh, starting from two thousand. 17, um, this uh, becomes more mandatory. And if uh, one public company, a listed company in Hong Kong, they don't didn't want to uh, disclose uh, the related information or fail to disclose, and they have to explain the reason. Okay. And this shows, right, uh, actually reflect the importance or the keenness of this uh, social information by the uh, public uh, uh, market. Okay. Not only the investors, but also the other stakeholders. Here, I also list out those um, uh, dimensions, uh, also sub-dimensions of uh, E, S, and G okay, in the below. Uh, after the forum, if you are interested, uh, we can also spend some time to, to uh, discuss and answer your questions.
uh, just now I'm also mentioned SDG. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, in 2015, uh, the United Nations introduced these 17 goals. And uh, also they set a, a target to uh, achieve and to promote sustainable development by 2030. And the whole guidelines contain 169 specific targets. Then uh, you may be curious to know what's the difference between SDG and ESG. So which guidelines we should make reference, right? Uh, simply speaking, okay, uh, they, they have a, uh, similar uh, objectives or similar scope okay and however for esg it's more oriented on the commercial uh, uh, world and for sdg not only for the commercial companies but also for some ngos for some uh, um, for profit uh, organizations also applicable and therefore actually we encourage uh, those public company, not only the public company, also SMEs, uh, you can make reference uh, to both guidelines and try to uh, uh, have a, a full picture of uh, the related uh, practice. After 2015, uh, the United States uh, Nations also uh, released a, a guideline uh, called the Sustainable Development Goal Disclosure Recommendations. And uh, just after the release of uh, SDG guidelines, and they want to educate or to uh, inform uh, the public, uh, you have done something good, okay? And you should report it or should release the information to the public to tell others. It's not for, uh, why, uh, for show off uh, what you have done, but actually try to uh, encourage your industry peers and encourage your customer or educate your customers to, to perform better. Okay? Try to create a kind of uh, environment, CSR environment in the business world. And also these uh, recommendations integrated those uh, key uh, uh, indicators obtained uh, uh, subtract from the integrated reporting framework, uh, this one. And the uh, GRI refers to global reporting initiative standards, as well as the uh, TCFD stands for Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures. Actually, the coverage is very uh, complete. Okay. Now you already have a basic idea of uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, what you can do, okay? What you can do, and uh, 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 what kind of uh, guidelines and the principles you need to make reference. Then you start to uh, worry about your resources, right? I only have these limited resources. Uh, I cannot, okay. Uh, fulfill the demand, okay, cannot meet the demand of all the stakeholder groups. So how, what I should do next, in the next step. So then I will suggest this flow chart, okay. This flow chart can help you uh, to better allocate your resources and to utilize your resources, okay. First of all, you need to get familiar with those SDG goals, uh, ESG uh, indicators. And then, as I mentioned, identify the importance of your stakeholders. Okay, uh, you try to list out your stakeholders groups in terms of the importance. And then you try to think about if there's any uh, barriers or a uh, catalyst uh, 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 for this, uh, for the, the performance you plan to do. Okay, and then uh, you try to select, pick up uh, several key SDGs, okay, which you think you have the confidence to uh, perform better or well, okay? And then you try to allocate the resources to those aspects. So that is the uh, a kind of uh, principle guidelines, but in the real practice, uh, you can adjust the whole process uh, according to, uh, to the uh, actual situation of the business, okay? And when we uh, talk about CSR, uh, SDG, ESG, I always want to remind uh, the entrepreneurs or uh, remind the audience, we also do, don't forget the stewardship concept, okay? And uh, the original concept of stewardship is you just need to do something good only for your principal's interest. Uh, if you were the manager, okay, if you was, uh, were the manager, you, you just 
the original concept is just do something good to your boss because he hired you, he paid you, right? But that is not enough, okay, in today's business world. Your business will not be sustainable uh, if you only keep the traditional concept of the stewardship. And the good steward nowadays is held, uh, refers to holding responsible and accountable also to different shareholders. Uh, and we call it steward for all. Here uh, shows you the evolution of these terms okay, from uh, the old times to, actually we can link uh, this concept with Friedman's stakeholder theory. Investors, okay, they also have become stewards of the society as well. Okay. And this spiritual side of stewardship actually can answer uh, some kind of kind of question like what are I do in regarding to others? What are my responsibilities? Okay, to to the uh, societies. So we can uh, use uh, uh, environmental aspect as an example because uh, environment issues is more uh, is e more easier for is easier for uh, us to understand. Okay, and if we look at the environmental aspect, uh Actually, you, you cannot just limit it to the uh, uh, air pollution, how to uh, uh, protect our environment. Uh, you need to uh, expand your knowledge to a broader uh, matters concerning uh, humanity. Okay? Uh, that is what we call uh, anthropocenes. Uh, anthrop 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 for, therefore, for the new stewardship, okay, we emphasize all the uh, ecological environmental, social, uh, spiritual, economic, and human justice okay, uh, aspects. So just a kind of a complete uh, picture of the uh, social responsible uh, uh, performance that uh, those uh, companies uh, need, to, uh, need to consider. Okay? And uh, two years ago, uh, during the uh, pandemic period, uh, our institute, uh, our institutions, our associations was invited by uh, Macau uh, Rich Institute by Father Stephen to conduct, uh, to work on a stewardship project uh, uh, to collaborate uh, uh, MRI. And we uh, conduct several focus group uh, interviews okay, with NGOs, with those uh, schools in Macau and also SMEs, okay, and uh, uh, as well as local associations, and we try to uh, understand uh, whether they can fully uh, okay uh, grasp the meaning of stewardship, okay, and we introduce the concept of stewardship just like what I introduced to you, uh, to them, and then let them to discuss with the group. Uh, to to uh, express their ideas and uh, uh, to uh, exchange their uh, 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 opinions and and also to provide us some information related what they have with what they had done okay for achieving the stewardship okay and finally we find out actually uh, the local societies is not really can uh, have a very good uh, knowledge about uh, the the real stewardship. That's why we think it's much better uh, uh, if we we can have some organizations to uh, provide a, a regular seminars just like MRI uh, or the training courses uh, to the local uh, public and the societies. And for SMEs, uh, at that time, we do have uh, do uh, find some very uh, good uh, recommendations, okay? And uh, based on the results of the research, we also uh, generate several uh, suggestions to SMEs. Here, I would like to show a uh, share with uh, with you. And actually, we hope that the SMEs uh, should not only view themselves as an individual entity; they should be part of the uh, CSR army. Uh. And uh, uh, also, uh, they can try to enlarge their social impact by uh, collaborating with other entities like NGOs. Because we, we all know SMEs, they have 
encounter some difficulties. They have limited resources, but they can work together with other parties. One plus one actually larger than two, okay, uh, to achieve some win-win uh, uh, situation. And uh, uh, we also encourage them uh, to uh, uh, have some continuous learning uh, on these aspects, uh, to attend some training uh, courses, uh, programs, okay. Um, and also, uh, they, they need to, uh, to, to, to create a kind of sense of belongings okay, towards the whole business sectors. Uh, they need to perform uh, this part of the ethical work from their deep heart. So that kind of education is very uh, essential. Okay? And they also uh, can uh, use some tailor-made uh, reskilling uh, programs Okay, and uh, try to upgrade their uh, uh, practice and uh, knowledge. Okay. Although most of them are small in size, but we think through some kind of uh, uh, progressively uh, conducted uh, practice, they can have a big impact for the whole society. Okay. And one uh, another very important point I would like to remind, uh, uh, like to uh, draw uh, SMEs protect. Uh, attention is uh, CSR sometimes is not only related to something you give out uh, to the others, okay? Actually, you also can earn back very important uh, benefits, okay? But this may not be a short, uh, may, it may not be visible in the short term, okay? But in the long term, okay, research results already prove CSR actually can generate long-term benefit for uh, for for the companies in the business world, okay. So here I would like to bring you one concept: storytelling, storytelling strategy. When you perform the CSR, actually you are creating different stories, okay, with the stakeholder, different stakeholder groups. You can keep these records and try to organize them into a uh, one and one cases. Okay, try to organize them and um, make more stories. You can promote these stories among different group members, okay? Just like you are promoting your own business image, create your brand image, okay? So then you achieve a very effective, okay? This kind of uh, 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 strat strategy is more effective and efficient than other promotion strategies, okay? So uh, as a concluding remark, to share with you a short interview video, and this interviewee is uh, Mr. Tang Ning, the founder and CEO of Credit Ease. And the most famous uh, word he had made uh, in the past year is, CSR is not an expense, but an investment in the future. Okay, and for Credit East, when he created Credit East, it is a very tiny company. Uh, it's not even a small to medium size, a tiny company. And, but he's always keep this uh, business philosophy. Uh, now Credit East already become a listed company in the United States. Okay, so let's watch this video. Ning, you pioneered a financial uh, fintech lending in China. When you founded Credit Ease 12 years ago, you were providing financial services to underserved populations. What was your mission? Yeah, actually, uh, in the past uh, 12 years of uh, development, uh, uh, Credit Ease uh, has captured uh, two main uh, big opportunities uh, in China's uh, financial services industry. One is uh, uh, the access to financing, access to credit. China, even today, uh, hasn't uh, built a very robust, uh, well-established uh, credit bureau system. Not to mention, when we uh, founded the company uh, in 2006, there was no uh, credit bureau infrastructure. So small businesses, uh, micro-entrepreneurs, consumers, and rural people really had a hard time accessing financing. So the idea of founding Credit Ease was to provide them with this access.
The other uh, big opportunity uh, we've been able to capture, we are a pioneer in educating China's investor population. How would you describe Credit Ease today? Well, today Credit Ease is a global fintech company uh, investing in uh, credit tech, uh, uh, wealth tech, insurance tech. Uh, we serve uh, different segments uh, uh, in different ways. For example, like uh, when we serve uh, Chinese like uh, rural uh, micro-entrepreneurs, small businesses, yeah, we are very local. Yeah, so uh, we are very hands-on, yeah. Uh, but uh, we also serve uh, China's uh, high net worth, ultra high net worth uh, investors, uh, global asset allocation and uh, succession planning, inheritance, their such needs. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a trend that's going on in business leadership here in the U.S. where many CEOs are now talking about the importance of addressing social and uh, social problems, social issues, uh, the needs of society. I'd like to get your take as a Chinese businessman, CEO, about the role of a company in addressing social problems. In order for a company to do well today and in the future, I think uh, uh, we need to be a mission-oriented organization. So we need to really be both commercially successful and socially meaningful. Yeah, so uh, our people, team members, talents, really want to do something not only for company profitably, but also for society. So I think this is very important. Secondly, I think uh, such efforts are in our intrinsic business model. We talk about like helping underserved the population access financial services. That's very social. And the third layer, in my view, is that all the CSR work we do, I don't think is an expense item. It's actually an investment. You've been a very successful founder and entrepreneur with what you've done with Credit Ease. As you look back, uh, what's the best leadership advice that you've ever received? Well, I have a, a very good friend who's also a, uh, a management consultant, uh, a worldwide expert, and he once uh, said to me that uh, every company uh, should uh, reinvent itself every five years. I think that's a great piece of advice because uh, yeah, we are very different today from uh, five years ago, and we are going to be very different five years down the road from today. So I think that's uh, something uh, a CEO should bear in mind, Re keep reinventing uh, himself and the company. Okay, um, so as you think, uh, I believe uh, if uh, we always uh, can root in our mind that when we uh, want to uh, promote our own company's business, at the same time, uh, we can uh, do something uh, common good for the society, then the journey of your business will be much longer. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's all for today's uh, sharing. Thank you. Okay.